The Yellowstone supervolcano is waiting to happen. Yellowstone National Park sits right on top of a giant, still active volcano. That's a concern. Yellowstone has been a national park since 1872, but it wasn't until the 1960s that scientists realized the scale of the volcano. It's 44 miles wide, and it wasn't until the 1980s that they realized that it was still active and still threatening to erupt catastrophically. Yellowstone is capable of an eruption thousands of times more powerful than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens. The northern Rocky Mountains would be buried in feet of ash. Ash would rain down on nearly everyone in the United States. It would be a bad day. So geologists want to understand what's really going on beneath all those hot springs and geysers that the volcano is fueling. Obviously, they want to know if and when Yellowstone will erupt again, and at what rate. A major eruption would be a low probability but high impact event, like a black swan, something that could impact society and the planet. The problem for scientists is that these massive, supervolcano, eruptions are rare, and the most important action lies unseen, miles beneath the surface, involving chaotic forces, complex chemistry, and puzzling geological features. A new study has provided insight into Yellowstone's hidden architecture. It models how magma rises from deep within the Earth and creates two large chambers of partially molten rock beneath the surface of the National Park. The two chambers are stacked on top of each other, separated by a layer, called a sill, like a windowsill, of unmelted rock. The magma rising from the Earth's mantle flows easily and doesn't contain much gas. It cools and solidifies as it collides with the relatively cool crust, forming the sill, the top of which is about six miles below the surface. Above the sill is the upper magma chamber, with thick, sticky magma that contains a lot of gas, which makes the magma in the upper chamber explode. Like an unopened can of soda that has been shaken, published in Geophysical Research Letters, explains how this two-tiered, geochemically diverse architecture might have emerged over time. Someday, we might have a model that shows what the system looks like when there's enough melting to have a big eruption, lead author Dylan Cologne, a doctoral candidate in Earth Sciences at the University of Oregon, told the Washington Post. The research was praised by Michael Poland, a scientist in charge of the U.S. Geological Survey's Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. What's interesting about their model is that they can go back in time and see how it might have affected the eruption rate millions of years ago. A new study builds on previous research on the two magma chambers. That study used sensors arrayed around Yellowstone to record the speed of seismic waves from small earthquakes that travel through subsurface rock. Those waves travel more slowly through hot and or partially molten rock formations. The data gave scientists MRIs showing two magma chambers. Supervolcano is not a technical term, it's worth noting. Experts call Yellowstone A caldera, or caldera-forming volcano. Some volcanoes form cone-shaped mountains. A caldera is a volcano that creates a large crater. This event swallows the mountain. Visitors to Yellowstone are given maps showing the current outline of the caldera, and if they go to the right vantage point. They can see that the heart of the park is very free of volcanoes. They are blown away or fall into a large hole. The Yellowstone area has seen three major eruptions, the first 2.1 million years ago, and the most recent 630,000 years ago. Contrary to rumors circulating on the internet, as well as conspiracy theories about a government cover-up, there is no sign that a fourth disaster is imminent.
In fact, it's possible that Yellowstone is getting a little old and tired. It may be ready for a long slumber rather than a major eruption. Ilya Bindeman, a geochemist at the University of Oregon and one of the authors of the new paper, says Yellowstone may be approaching the end of its evolution because so much of the material in the upper magma chamber has been recycled and remelted after previous eruptions. As Poland puts it, how many times do you want to reheat leftovers? At some point you say, I'm not going to reheat it. You've microwaved it six times, and it's not food anymore. Intellectual humility is in order here. No one can say with absolute certainty how much magma it takes to trigger a caldera-forming eruption.